woman of, of, of 65 years old trying to make a living without a pension, making my own living out of tenants. But you're making a lot of money out of tenants. No, I'm not. Oh, yes, you are. Meet Violet Barker, slum landlady. Now, how many do, properties how do you own? How much do you get per week? Would you like to tell me? A lot less than you. You get a lot less than me. How many properties how do you own? How much do you own? get a week? How many properties do you own? I'm the bookkeeper. I've probably got fair amount. In fact, Mrs Barker owns three houses in Melbourne's northern suburbs. Can you show us the master bedroom? This is it. Yep. This is where you sleep. Yep. Mm. This isn't one of Mrs Barker's it? houses. Does it's a derelict garage at the back of one of her houses and she rents it to this man on unemployment benefits for $140 a fortnight. Doesn't leave you much, does it? No. Mm. It's a bit sad, isn't it? Oh well, it's a place to live. When you've got nowhere else to go. Mm. The conditions are disgraceful. There's no toilet, no rudder, except when it rains and the roof leaks and asbestos leaches out of the walls. Why are you against me? Are you into well, the property against, deal? I'm not against you, you I'm asking you questions. You're into the property scam too, are you? Well, you're into the... You're into there's the... a lot of... But there's yuppies everywhere. Not content with taking half of this man's doll payments, Violet Barker lets out another of this squalid lean-to to another tenant. She slugs him $170 a fortnight. That's the way we get into the house, by opening the door that way. Right, so have you got a key? No, I don't have a key. We went through the house with Carmel Boyce from the Rooming House Tenants Association. No, right, so this is the kitchen. These men are just two of five tenants who live in a house on the same property owned by Mrs Barker. She extracts $70 a week from each man for this. This tap has been fixed for three weeks. We have to shave like this. While Mrs Barker rakes in more than $500 a week from tea, the seven tenants share just one ring on a broken rooms, stove. Don't work, only the one works. Why do you put up with these conditions? Well, virtually because you've got nowhere else to go. And today the men were told by the Tenants Association that a $10 a week electricity levy imposed by Mrs Barker was illegal. And how do you feel you've been paying that $10 a week? Well, I feel ripped off. Council's had fairly extensive dealings with Mrs Barker. Late last year, Mrs Barker's harassed neighbours presented this petition to the Northcote City Council, demanding official action over her rent racket. But the council didn't properly invest until we became involved. I think you're right in terms of the inspection we did after, after Christmas. That inspection was not detailed enough. Dr David Niven is the chief executive of the council, which has since discovered that Violet Barker has been running an illegal boarding house. Now the council will act. Council's concerned about that and we're making a, an immediate inspection of the garage which has been converted. Violet Barker's battles with authorities go back 10 years. In 1982, the conditions in this house were so bad the Ministry of Housing declared it unfit for human habitation. But that didn't stop the mercenary missus from renting it, or the authorities from doing nothing about it. If all that sounds bad enough, there's even worse. Three of Violet Barker's former tenants, elderly people, claim money is missing from their bank accounts. Bank accounts that Violet Barker helped manage. This gentleman, Nilly, says he's lost his entire life savings of $15,000. How can I rip off the pensioner? Because they were vulnerable. Being handed to the government, was I supposed to keep him? Many of the tenants, like Violet Barker's, are the lost souls of society, often unemployable and easy targets for hard landlords. But increasingly, others are victims of the housing crisis caused by the recession. Unfortunately for us, she's not the only person that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis that, that treats people on low incomes like this. Carmel Boyce has served Mrs Barker with breach of duty notices that cite nearly 50 with the garage slum and the house. This looks like a slum to me. Well, that's what they've made it. That's their premises, not mine. But you're charging them $70 and, and $90 a week, I respectively. My electricity bill was $750. Do you want to have a look at it? Are you a slum landlord? No, I don't, I don't live in there. She's a uh, qualified accountant and uh, she hasn't come up with any rent receipts or any receipts of any kind. Tenants have also been asked to work at other properties that this owner owns for $10 a day. I mean, that's obviously exploitation. $10 a day? Yes, that's the wages they were offered. The work? 
No, I think at, at that stage the tenant refused. I mean, he actually thought that $20 would be more reasonable. Listen, would you take these sort of people into your own home? Fair dinkum, would you? She makes her fortune here. She earns $500 a week at least from this property. Um, I wouldn't say that's caring and sharing. How would you treat these people? Well, she treats them with contempt. I'm the one that's vulnerable. I'm the one with the property. You're what the one... What are they after me for? You're the one before... This is the house on the property. The facilities here are shared by seven men, but the conditions are much better. But first, boarding houses and the battlers who live in them because they simply can't afford to go anywhere else. They may be elderly, sick or intellectually disabled, but they're also people who are easy prey for greedy landlords. Well, tenants of two squalid boarding houses in Melbourne reckon they've... and they're now fighting back as Martin King reports. So how would you describe this place, John? That's a filth, mate. I'm disgracing myself just living in it. It looks like a rubbish tip, but for John Hyatt, this place is home. Actually, it's a pigsty, isn't it, to be quite honest? Well, yes, it is, sir. Yeah. You're living in a pigsty. Yes. Yeah, so John's I'm... landlady is Violet Barker. She sleeps where he eats. You know, this is where the kitchen, this is where we eat, you know, we, we cook our food, and how dare you sleep in the kitchen? It's not right. How can we sit down and have a nice meal? Mrs Barker is a slum landlady. She owns two boarding houses across the road from each other in Melbourne. I'll tell you what, my place has been an awful lot cleaner than this place here. A total of seven people live in the houses. At number 80, Scotty, Kevin, Caroline and another man pay through the nose around $100 a week for just one room each. Across the road, three people pay their greedy land round the same for a roof over their heads. It's not right how you're treating everybody. You're harassing everybody for their money. paying his rent. I've got it written on paper He's that I've paid my rent. He's I've got it written on paper that I've paid my rent. Thank He's you very much. much. In the other house, the conditions are shocking. Mouse droppings in the cutlery drawer, firing, leaky ceilings, a fridge that doesn't work, one filthy hot plate between four people, broken windows or no windows, no heating, no telephone, a bung washing machine, and no smoke detectors. And look at this. She charged an old man a hundred dollars a week to sleep there. She didn't even issue the guy with a key for the door, so he got in and out through here. Through That's the window. It. When Mrs. Barker needs tenants, she targets selective groups. The elderly, the sick, the vulnerable, and the socially disadvantaged. In other words, people who can't fight back for themselves. And doesn't she make a pretty penny from them? Every month they pay her almost three and a half thousand dollars, almost always in cash. She is disgustingly greedy. All she wants is money, 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 money. Uh, she's actually walked through my room demanding rent while I've been in bed early in the morning. Oh. Having a month rent. You mind your own business. Three and a half thousand dollars a month rent. Oh. <laughs> How ridiculous you are. What is ridiculous is that for almost a decade, Mrs Barker has been allowed to operate places like these with the full knowledge of the authorities. Even court orders defaults are simply ignored. <laughs> that doesn't stop you from being a slum landlord, does it? Oh, you can call it what you like, I don't care. Well, what do you call yourself? I call myself a lady compared to you. We've got the dripping water here, near, near the light, of course, and we've got the overflow system, which doesn't work properly. It's been like that for years. Scotty Grant took us on a tour of the home he shares with three others. This is the fridge that um, Violet said I was to use when I moved in here. But, I mean, I'm, I'm not using that. Does it work? But, no, it doesn't work. It's disgusting. All right, this, yeah, this, as you can see, this light here, I mean, the bare wires hanging out there. We get ends, we actually have water dripping through there. Well, it's bloody outrageous, isn't it? It's, it's exploitation in its purest form. We asked Kate Carr from the Tenants' Union to inspect the conditions here. What did you think? Clearly, Martin, it's bloody outrageous, isn't it? How common is this? It's not unusual for us to hear story. You know, somebody living in a place that's full of rats or somebody who went into a place and three or four days later had scabies. This is the mattress she's given you. It's a pretty, um, mm, flea-bitten old mattress, isn't it? That's not the best. How much do you pay for this room, Kevin? Uh, 100 a week. 100 dollars a week. Ask 
Kate Carr from the Tenants' Union to inspect the conditions here. What did you think? Clearly, Martin, it's bloody outrageous, isn't it? How common is this? It's not unusual for us to hear story. You know, somebody living in a place that's full of rats or somebody who went into a place and three or four days later had scabies. This is the mattress she's given you. It's pretty, um... Mmm, flea bit on mattress, isn't it? That's not the best. How much do you pay for this room, Kevin? Uh, 100 a week. $100 a week. 100 a week. Worth that much? Uh, I think so. Uh, Kevin Pilati stays here because he has landlady? no family. His parents died five years ago. What do you think of your landlady? I think she's very evil, to tell you the truth. She's come over across the road many times for no reason at all, just you know, constant harassing. You know, like if you don't like the place, get out. The tenants are so fed up with Mrs Barker, they're fighting back. Restraining orders warning her off are plastered on their doors. All the time she comes in, I say, Violet, please, you're breaking the restraining order, get out. And she won't listen. So now I can't tell her that. So I put this sign there so she can see it. And I feel that if I move out, it'll get swept under the carpet. And what I want to do is I want to bring Mrs Barker down and I want to prove to the residential tribunal that she is not fit of running a rooming house. She should not be running a rooming house, specifically having most vulnerable people in society here. Oh, you can see how I've renovated and decorated. Look at this. I've got objects to art here. Oh, you've got what? Oh, very valuable, some very valuable stuff here. You wouldn't recognise it. I wouldn't it. call them objects to art. I don't think you'd recognise it because you don't look as though you've got aesthetic taste at all. Yeah, well, I've got better taste than this in kitchens. 